Hey everybody, my name is Dolan and today I'm going over how to set up leaderboards in GameSparks. So what I want to do first is go to Configurator and create an event. The event's name, shortcode, will be high score points. Actually, let's keep it all in caps. Update. Update points. The name's gonna be high score update points and the description will be update points of a update high score points of a player. And we need an attribute. In our case, it will be a number. The shortcode for it will be points. The name is going to be points. And the default value is zero. And we want to set this to maximum. Save and close. After this, we need to head over to our um, leaderboards. We want to add a new leaderboard, which is um, leaderboard underscore points and I should also keep everything the same leaderboard points points leaderboard down here we can select for example the team the update frequency so Let's say how often the leaderboard updates. So if you say you collect all data in one day and it updates the next, you can do that. Or you can have it on real time or you can have it on a week or monthly. And you can even set up how, how often or when you want the leaderboards to reset. Let's say you have a jump and run game and you want to keep track of um, just poor, um, high scores. But you don't want to clutter up the high scores and you want to clear them out every now and then. So you could say daily, weekly, or monthly. And that's all important settings for us. We just need to add a field, which is already exactly what we need. It's our, wait, um, is it, why do I have two events? High score update points. High score update points. There we go. I don't know why I have two functions. Oh, never mind. Okay. So it's our high score update points. And in here we have a points variable, which is referenced here. And yeah. So the leaderboard is now set up in GameSparks. So let's head over to UE4. Back in the editor, let's create a new widget. And I'm this time thinking about also future tutorials. So we're gonna make a widget blueprint underscore um, general, which we're gonna create after we logged in. So what we're gonna do is we get a horizontal box and set this horizontal box to fill and make it zero and zero. Then I'm gonna get a vertical box in here and I get a widget switcher. The widget switcher is there so we can switch between different widgets. In our case, we're gonna switch from tutorial to tutorial what we wanna display and what we wanna do. So yeah, so let's get a button in here and put some text on said button. This is going to be show leaderboards. And we want to create a new widget blueprint, widget blueprint underscore leaderboard boards. And the other one will be widget blueprint underscore leaderboards row. And in leaderboards row, we wanna pretty much, we don't need a canvas panel, we want a horizontal box. 
And what we want to display here, uh, two texts, text and text, which we want to put a scale box on. Scale, rep with scale box, mm -hmm. that always happens. Wrap with scale box, there we go. And we wrapped it with a size box, so we can limit the height of it. So let's set the height to like 40. And the other thing doesn't matter. And then we set those two just to fill. Don't worry, they don't look as big when we later on display it in our widget. So what this is gonna be is is a, um, is score, and this is gonna be player. And we can also go into custom and change the height to 40 and the length to like 400, which, oh, other way around, 40 and 400. There you go. So we wanna set those all to the left side and we wanna make a new function in here, custom event update score. And what we want to do with update score is we want a variable text score and text underscore player. So what we're going to do with this is actually, let's give that player a nicer color. So let's give him like soft blue. Let's get the score like a soft yellow. There we go. And let's give it just generally a border. And make that like padding of top five and bottom five. There we go. And make the color, oh, not this color. Let's make this color a soft green, something like this. So this is pretty much how our row later looks. And this event here, we are gonna use to, oop, I forgot the T player to make it a variable, T score, oh, I need to also select the right one, is already a variable. So let's get T player and we wanna set text. And T score, we wanna do the same, we wanna set the text. So we're gonna have two variables in here, which is gonna be our player and our score. Now we wanna go in our leaderboards and pretty much just make a scroll box in here and create a, actually we need a scroll box and we need a text box. I'm gonna use the text box, wrap, uh, wrap with vertical box, da, 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 wrap with vertical box. So I'm gonna wrap it with a vertical box so we can have some stuff below our scroll box. So let's set this to fill and also set this to fill, but 0 0.2 only, uh, 0 0.1 actually should be enough. And actually this text box, Wrap with a vertical box. Yeah. Nope, it's a horizontal box. Um, I always make those mistakes, I don't know why. Horizontal box. And then we need a button. Put a button in here and set those both to fill and get a spacer in between those two and set this to fill. So here is our Custom event to uh, is our. No, oh, also we want on committed, not on changed. So this is gonna be our edit underscore update score. This will be for testing mainly, and the button on the right will be button underscore refresh scorers or scorer. That also works. And let's put a text on there and put it in a scale box because we all know scale box are great to keep consistency with UI. So let's do that over here. Scale box. So let's fill this and we got to refresh right here. And on refresh, 
need to also click on the button. On refresh, we wanna GS cat is it leaderboards data requests and the leaderboard shortcode in our example will be let me go to GameSparks GameSparks because I forgot the leaderboard a leaderboard code what it's called uh, let's let me sign in login leaderboard shortcode should be leaderboards leaderboard points and then we can decide how many entries we want and we can we can like cut off the first 10 the first 15 we can make a really really technically complex system because we could say we want 20 entries, but we don't want to include the first 10. So we all like we can make a page system. So let's say on page one, you have one till 20. On the next page, you start with 20 and go to the next 20. So you could technically stagger the load without, uh, without sending too much data towards GameSparks. And what we want to do is we want to break leaderboard response and only if we don't have errors. Technically, we can just say oh, we want to display an er a message when we don't have errors, but I'm going to not do that for now. So what I want to do is I want to get data and we want to for each loop data to get our data. We want to break leaderboard data. And I just realized uh, we forgot something in our scoreboards road, which I'm just gonna really quickly add, which is just a position value. We're gonna make this to the right, and this is leaderboard position. We wanna also set this in here set text and we're gonna call this leader board position and before we actually call this we wanna get our score box in here make it a variable which is gonna be um, score box so we keep all scores in here. So on the first button click, we wanna clear children to get rid of any kind of children that are still in there. And then we wanna create a widget, widget, um, leaderboards row. Normally you could make all those variables inherited, but I really don't like inheritance because it's more expensive than setting it once. So I'm mostly going always with just setting the value. So we can, we can call, did I call it update score? Yeah. So what I can get in here, we can get number, get number and put that into score. And our number in this case is score because, oops, that's the wrong one, events, do do do, it's called points. So we can just get our points. And username is gonna be in player, and rank is gonna be in leaderboard position. What we wanna do at the end is gonna get our score box and literally just add not add array add child so whenever we we call this we only generate like we generate new data and we clear the old data and every time we rerun it we do the same and yeah one thing we can also do is so we don't overload a specific thing Whenever we 
click here, we can say set is enabled to false. So whenever we click that button, we can't click that button again unless it's either successful or, or is not successful or is successful and ran through everything. So yeah. What we want to do with the editable text box is we want to go ahead and uncommit it. I think we already have that to string and then to int. And then we want to set the number with a gs log event request gs log event request gs log event request and uh, we need to make a create log event attributes and with those attributes we wanna s s god damn it visual studio we wanna set a number there we go our number variable will be points. Wait, did I call them points also in the event? Um, yeah, I call them also in the event. So we get our points and our event is called update high score points. And on false, we want a print string updated high score data. Updated high score data. So now we can head back to general and have our first widget switcher be this one. And now we're gonna, we can just test it. Now done with, the, nearly done with the widget, we need to change a few things, which I just found. So first of all, we need to set this to full transparency. Otherwise it will be really hard to read us. That was in the leaderboard row. In the leaderboards, we can set this to enabled. We need to set this to enabled, otherwise we can never press a button again. And in the player controller main, we need to duplicate this and create, um, create general widget. There we go. And we wanna set this to general. In GI main, we need to get player controller. We need to cast to PC main and then general widget. So yeah, so we're just adding the general widget after we remove the login widget. And one thing I didn't go earlier over in GameSparks. Let me pull that up really quickly. We saw that we, that's probably not up to date anymore. So let's refresh it really quickly. So yeah, what do we have here? What does Maximum do? Maximum always updates to the new Maximum. Let's say you had 150 points before, but you try to update it with 50, it will stay 150. Minimum, if you had 150, but updated with 50, it will get 50. But if you have 50 and updated with 100, I think it stays 50. I'm not sure about that one, but it always sets the minimum. The sum is the sum of both values. So let's let's say you add 50 to an already existing 50, which generates 100. Count is how many you set, I think. I'm not sure about that one. And last is just the last number you set will be set. And for our type, we're gonna go with last. So that should have been everything. So let's just click play. And the first user we're gonna create is user A with the password 1234. Let's register that user and refresh. We don't have any values. So what we wanna do is we wanna update the value. So let's say we have 123 as a value. Now we see we have user A with a 123 value at point one. So let's get user, user B. One, two, three, four, and click register. We can now, as user B, uh, refresh and see user A. 
we don't like that user A, uh, let's say, is first. So let's say we got a score of 1000. Now if we refresh, we see that user B is higher than user A. But let's say we want to submit another high score, which is maybe lower, because you think we're kind of, we're kind of over the top at the moment. So we can say we have 500. And we can refresh. Now it's headed to 500. And like I said earlier, you can always, you can use the different types to set it differently. So let's say on runtime, we change it to maximum. Say we only got like 300 points and we try to update, it will stay at uh, 500 but if we get 800 points we can see it updated but everything below like 799 won't update it will stay at 800. This is pretty much the scoreboard you can create as many users as you can and let's go over a few other things in game sparks. Back in game sparks we want to click over at manage and admin screens because if you manually want to clear users you need a way to do that and normally you would think you can just go into your collections your leaderboard uh, your runtime totals and find them and just delete them just delete them but the issue is this way there will always be the leaderboard entries in here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to manage admin screens and do 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 let it load we're gonna add, no, nope, that's not the right add. Let's go back to admin screens. I am sorry about that one. Do, do, do. Let it reload. I think we need to add it here. Nope. We need to import export and here we can select what we need. For right now, we only need leaderboard management, so we click import. We let it import really quickly. And when it's done, do, do, you can go in here, click on leaderboards, click on here. And now we see our leaderboards right here. We see our user A, B and user A. There you go. And we can go ahead and just click delete all entries. Yes. Back into the data explorer. We can also Let's say we have a bunch of players which were test players and we don't want anymore. What we want is before we launch the project, we can go into remove. And I only recommend doing this when you don't have any important users and have just a lot of clutter in there. You can click on remove and just pretty much send a empty packet which pretty much deletes everything in there. So we can click remove and to affect it, and now we don't have any users anymore. With the set, this was episode, well, this was part two of Gamesbox's tutorial. Hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a nice day.